in the waiting room at an outpatient clinic, how'd they get there? Walk right in. in. Did they walk right in? If they walked right in, and today you're going to, you, you're teaching them to use crutches, and they walked in without crutches, that's probably not the case. They're probably either on a walker or, you don't necessarily want to just take a wheelchair. They might have come in in a wheelchair and you're teaching them. But definitely have your gait belts with you. Don't don't go see a patient without a gait belt on you. I told some of them yesterday that <coughs> how they get in, unless you visibly see them come in, okay, how they get in is, is how they got in. But once you greet them, once you attend to them, you're responsible for everything that happens after that. So I, I had instructed them to just go ahead and put the gait belt on because when you take your now responsible for that treatment session. If something happens from then on, it's up to you. If something happens before that, the in patient... In the parking lot. Yeah, you walk them to the door as they're about to leave? I walk them to the waiting room. Yeah. Okay. And I say, you might want to sit down and rest for a little bit. Is your husband coming? You know, you feel okay getting to the parking lot? You know, it's like, you're checking in, but you're not, you know... You will know if, you, if it's not a good idea to just let that patient walk out of there. You know, it would be obvious, and that will be a decision you'd make in the clinic. You would say, you know, so your husband's out in the parking lot and he's just waiting for you in the car. I don't know, based on your treatment today, how safe I think you are to just go walk out in the parking lot with your walker. So can we call him and have him come in and get you? You know, that would be something you'd want to do. You just, you don't want to, like, when you know it's going to happen, you can prevent it. And sometimes people walk in and they really... Shouldn't have walked Shouldn't have walked in. <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes we have asked them, can you call someone to come get you? Or I drive you home because you really should not be driving. If the doctor says you have to drive up with that boot on, okay, they have a broken leg, they have a boot on. Oh, I've been taking it off to drive. We as, you know, we're responsible for that patient. We have to follow what the doctor says. So they have to drive with that boot on. If they cannot drive with that boot on, you know, the alternative is can you call somebody to drive you home? Because we're still responsible for them if they leave and something happens, you know, they're outside the clinic. And we I actually knew about it, that they weren't following precautions. Oh, I'm putting all my weight on it. You know, you're liable still for, for some of that. If you know, will knowingly let them go. If you don't know it and what they do outside is one thing, but if you know it, you have to document it and then make arrangements. I say that we are professional nags. Yeah. Because we always tell the patient the last thing they want to hear, they're like, oh, it'll be fine. You're like, well, no, actually, no, we're going to get serious now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the, you know, the yeah, you have to be that person. We're bad, <laughs> bad big brother, or, or you're, you know, we're the worst, you know, we're worse than your mother. But you have to be because uh, patients don't always listen to physicians, and sometimes they don't listen to us either. But you you have to get them to toe the line. It's It's really... This is what the, the order is. This is what you have to do. This is what, it doesn't matter if you're a PTA or a PT. You still, this is what you have to do. Last thing, one of the last things on your rubric is to clean up your area after the treatment. So we would expect you to see what I'm doing. It's just a natural habit. Clean everything up. So I get all the way, get everything out of the room. Clean, I'm going to spray the table down like that. And during that whole thing, at some point, someone would have asked you a few questions about what you're doing. It's the only difference. Like such as, just like thought questions. So did you get the thought questions? Yeah. yeah. Those questions. Oh, okay. We might ask you other questions, too, if we're trying to clarify what you're doing, yeah. if we're not sure. I have another question. I think it might have been brought up in the industry, but like say you come in and they have crutches out there and you go for them in, do you just kind of reassess their crutches and then bring them here and then fit them or do you go just fit them? Fit them the second they stand up and they're in your care, you're going to fit the crutches, even if it's in the waiting room. So that's not a strict little violation or whatever? No. Could I see the little plan of care? You're not talking about their diagnosis. You're not revealing personal health information. You're saying, those don't look like they fit you. I'm not going to let you walk back uh, 30 feet to the treatment room while you compress your axillary nerve. No, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust them right now. So, so then I do, won't say that, but we take in my head I'm saying that. Like a transfer then to like a sit to stand, 
if they're eating crutches, I yeah. guess we demonstrate yeah. that right then. You're going to do well. a sit to stand anyway yeah. when they get up to walk back. Yeah, your treatment starts the second you shake hands with that person. So if they come in and we have to do like a ramp or something, can we just automatically No, just I would take them, them back to the room. Explain. I would talk with them. I'd get your, do your patient interview because you don't want to go to sleep <coughs> without interview because okay. you don't know what their status is that day. And you don't want to interview in the waiting room. Maybe that's, that's definitely what talking about. about not don't not interview. Not don't yeah. start that part. Get them out of the waiting room, but you've got to start your gates. Anything they have to do to get up in the chair and get back to the treatment room. Then you interview, find out what's going on, get start planning. Because you, you can have a plan, and then they can start talking to you, and your plan is going to have to change based on the things they're telling you. You never know what you get until you start talking to the patient. Everything can change. Where was that idea I was going to do today? I had this whole plan that was going to do. Okay? Do you feel better or worse? <laughs> and I've been playing it up some, so. She plays up. But, you know, we expect you guys to portray the patient. Now, don't be cruel to your to your SPTA is already Corey, terribly Corey, nervous. Don't, be like that. <laughs> <laughs> don't be don't ask a bunch of questions and get really don't try to trip your SPTA up because you're trying to be such a good patient. That, you know, but be a good be a, be that diagnosis. Demonstrate what you have read that, that diagnosis presents. She presented like an MS patient. She definitely did. Just like my friend Michelle. She's got MS and that's exactly how she gets around. It's scary. <laughs> she holds on for sure. But yeah, so try to portray the patient because it makes it easier actually. It makes the treatment yeah. easier. It makes you remember stuff that you wouldn't remember. If they're not wobbling all over the place, you might actually let go of the gate belt. Just because you don't remember that they have a balance problem. So it's actually better to really portray the patient. Okay? Can we move on now? All right. So we're